Hi, and welcome to our most recent video covering DIY solutions for high-tech projects. If you've been interested in exploring the potential of AI tools, but don't like the idea of tying yourself to one of the proprietary tools being offered by tech giants like Google and OpenAI, this video explores some cool open source alternatives. Specifically, we'll be going through the process of setting up your own generative AI chatbots on an Unraid server with all the features you'd expect from one of the major chatbots like ChatGPT, answering questions, analyzing data, and generating images. For those who don't know, Unraid is a Linux-based operating system for home servers that features an approachable UI and a strong community supporting its environment. It's a great way to host something like an AI where you can have full control of the data you're working with. If you are unfamiliar but interested, definitely check out one of our other videos going into setting up the Unraid server itself. But for now, let's get right into it. So our first step here is going to be to log into our Unraid UI and then head to the Apps tab here to grab our first piece of software, which will be the Olama app, which will host our actual AI models. We've actually gone ahead and installed all of these apps already, so instead of an install button, we see an actions button here which does give us access to this edit tab, which has all the same info as the install setup screen. And we've installed these apps with mostly default settings. While we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and grab the port number for this app and transfer that over to our document. Definitely recommend doing this having a centralized place for all the important addresses and any notes that are important to how you're doing your setup. Also important to read the instructions in any of these app windows as it'll let you know if you, there are any prerequisites or extra pieces of setup. For example, the Alama one said we needed the NVIDIA driver plugins. So we'll go ahead and grab that now. Again, we have already installed these apps. So where we have an action button, you'll see the install button. No special settings we need to do for the NVIDIA driver one. So we'll go ahead and move on to our next app, which is the Open Web UI which is where we'll actually go ahead and interact with our AI models. Like before, we'll search for it in our search bar here and go ahead and head into the app screen. Again, there's a bunch of instructions and settings that we're gonna wanna pay attention to. This big one marked important about the environmental variable we did already set up in our original Olama setup. And the OpenAI key is irrelevant to us because we're not gonna be using OpenAI models. Like before, we'll want to come in here and record the port number. It's worth noting that we did change this to 8081 from the default of 8080 to avoid conflicts. And then you'll also see that it is asking for the Olama base URL here, which you'll need to put in. And that's just going to be the address that we recorded earlier when we were setting up our Olama app. Once you make those changes, you'll want to hit apply here at the bottom, but we already did that so we can just hit done. Now that we're all done with that, we can go into setting up the UI itself. So we can go into our document that we've been making and use this address as the actual link for our open web UI. Here it's going to ask you to sign up with an account. This is all stored on your server to put whatever info here you want, but we've already done this. So we'll go ahead and sign in here. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and get us some models to start chatting with. So we'll go ahead into the top right here, click on our little icon and head to the admin panel where we'll find a lot of different settings. First though, we'll wanna go to the connections tab and connect our Olama app by going to our notes here, grabbing the Olama URL and pasting it into the Olama API section here. Once we're done there, we can head to the model section then we can do this little link here to see the various models available for us to download via the Olama platform. The one I'm interested in for today is called Lava, which is a popular multimodal model. What this means is that as opposed to a large language model, which can just take language as an input, Lava can take multiple types of input, including language, but also images. All I need to do for the download itself is type Lava into the pull a model window and go to the right to hit the download button and the download starts. Once the download is finished, I can go ahead and start chatting with my new model. So it can go ahead into new chat. I have a drop down menu here for the various models I have downloaded. I can select Lava and then go ahead and ask it a question. Been interested in barn owls lately, so let's ask him for some fun facts about those. 
Remember, these bots will be running on your own hardware, so depending on your system, it may take a little longer than you're used to, but after not too long, we get a response a lot like we'd expect from ChatGPT. And that's everything you need to know for the basic setup of getting your own locally hosted chatbot running. There's a lot of advanced features here that you'll probably want to play around with, including custom models and a whole website platform where you can download models, tools, and various prompts created by people in the community. There's definitely a lot to explore here, which can all be managed in the workspace section of your UI, along with any documents you'd like to provide that may contain personal information that you'd like to work with using your AI. One advanced feature that I do want to cover is image generation, but to do that we'll need to grab a couple more apps. So let's head back into the app tab in our Unraid UI and look for our first app here, the main one, which is Automatic 111, a web UI for stable diffusion. As always, we'll want to pay close attention to the app window here for special instructions, which they have some links to here as well as any warnings about common issues like they give here about the Docker image size. If you ever do encounter issues with your setup, it's always a good idea to refer back to these pages to make sure you didn't miss any details. Like before, I took the port number for my automatic 1111 install and go ahead and put that in my document. And now I'm ready to move on for actually getting models for my stable diffusion. Unlike with Olama and OpenWeb UI, there's no way for me to do this from within the app, so we're gonna have to do it manually. And to make this a lot easier, we're gonna go ahead and get an important plugin. Specifically, we will be grabbing Dynamics File Manager, which is a native file manager for the Unraid environment. There are a number of disadvantages of doing it this way versus using command line, but I did wanna show this method as it's very simple and can help with managing things down the line. With that installed, we can go to our Shares tab and go look for our auto automatic folder in our app data here, and then find the model folder therein. Thanks to Dynamics File Manager, I have a bunch of extra options here at the bottom, most importantly upload, but before I do anything there, I need to get the model I want to actually upload. For that, I'd recommend using Hugging Face, so we can go into Google, type Hugging Face Stable Diffusion, and go ahead and click the Models link. From there, you'll see a big list of different models you can use. Stability AI here is the developer of Stable Diffusion. I have a new model here, but it does require you to put in personal info to download it, which I don't feel like doing, so we'll go ahead and grab an older model. There's definitely lots of useful info on these pages, some in-depth documentation on how these models work and how to use them, but we can go ahead to Files and Versions to grab the model itself. In general for this workflow, we're gonna be looking for these safe tensors files here at the bottom. There's obviously a lot of other stuff here, but that's a topic for another day and you won't need it for the basic setup that we're doing. Once that's finished downloading, we can go back to our model folder that we had open from earlier. Go ahead and hit upload and select the model that we just downloaded. Wait just a second here and we'll see that the file has started uploading. While very convenient, the big disadvantage of this method is that we are downloading a file onto our computer and then uploading it to our server when we could just download it directly to the server. So I'll go over how we can do that on command line with a curl command. We'll start by opening the Unraid terminal with the button in the top right and then navigating to the appropriate folder by right clicking the file path in the UI and then copying it into a cd command in the terminal. Next, we'll go back to Hugging Face, go back to the download link we used earlier, and right-click it here to copy the link. And now we're ready for the actual curl command, so that will be curl-l to handle redirects, and dash o followed by the desired file name to tell it to output the results into the file name we chose, and then the link of the download inside of quotes. If all works as it should, you should see the download progress here. And then once that's done, we can reload our folder here and see the item is downloaded. Now that we have a model, we're ready to start using Stable Diffusion. So we'll go back into our document and use the link we made to access the UI. 
At the top here is a drop down with all of our models. When you go in there, you can see there's just the three that I had from before. So we'll need to go ahead and hit the refresh button here and go back to the drop down menu and we'll see our new model. Once selected, it'll take a little while for Stable Diffusion to load the model. But while we wait, we can take a look at the prompt we wanna do. I actually have one in here that I was playing with earlier, just something very simple, a little penguin with a hat. And once our model is done loading here, we can go ahead and generate something. And you'll see once I hit generate here, it'll give me a pretty good image of what I asked for. There's a lot of fine tuning that can go on with Stable Diffusion, but that's another topic for another video. With all that set up, we can now connect Stable Diffusion to our chatbot. So we'll go back to Open Web UI, back to the admin panel, and then to the images tab. Here you'll see a toggle to turn the feature on and off. And then here it's asking for the automatic base URL, which is again, just the link you would use to access Stable Diffusion. Paste that in there, and then we'll take a look at some important settings at the bottom. First, we have the default model here. We'll try to use the model we just downloaded, so I'll go back to Stable Diffusion, copy this string of letters and numbers here at the end, and paste that into my default model space. Then we have image size and generation steps. The bigger the image and the more steps, the more resources and time it will take. And with that saved, we can go ahead and start generating images. To do that, you can go to any response given to you by any of your chatbots. We'll use the barn owl question from earlier and hit this little generate image button. As you can see, the image it gives me is kind of crazy looking. So we can try some things to get some better looking images. First, I will just try using a different model. Go back into my admin settings and choose a different model that I have worked with already. Let that save and then we can go back to our prompt and hit the generate image button again. And pretty quickly we get a actually much better image. Still some weird artifacts in there, but it was better than I was expecting. Even so, that prompt wasn't initially written with the intention of making an image, so let's try starting with a prompt that is meant for that. This feature isn't mature enough yet for me to be able to ask directly for an image, so instead I will be asking for a visual description that I can use as fodder for the Generate Image button. Another way to go about this is to actually ask the chatbot to create a prompt for Stable Diffusion, and there are actually custom models that are designed specifically for this. I decided to keep going with my penguin with a hat prompt from earlier, and as you can see, I asked the bot to make its response brief so that we don't overload Stable Diffusion with unnecessary information. Once it's done responding to our request, we can go ahead and hit the Generate Image button here, and it'll pretty quickly give us an image of this cool looking little guy here. It does seem like they gave him a mustache for some reason, but overall, not bad. Finally, let's take a look on how we can use our web UI to create an image from an image. So, we'll start out by taking advantage of one of OpenUI's cool features, which is adding multiple models to a chat. So we'll add Lava here, which is our multimodal model from earlier. Copy and paste the image into the prompt area, and then direct the prompt at Lava by typing at Lava. As for the prompt itself, since I can't ask it to directly make an image, I will have it first analyze the image and turn it into a description that I can then feed into Stable Diffusion. You may notice that I ask it to put the description in a JSON file, and that is just a very efficient format that'll make the description more machine readable. Now I just have to wait for it to respond, and then I can once again hit the Generate Image button, and we'll see how good it did recreating. There's definitely some differences here, but given how AI is notoriously bad at keeping consistency between images, this really isn't too bad a result. To then iterate on the image, we'll just need to ask our chatbot to edit the description. So I'll go down to my prompt and ask Lava to edit the description so the penguin is wearing a different hat. Once we hit our generate image again, we can see it seems to have invented a whole new type of hat that looks a bit odd, so we'll ask for something more specific. Go down and ask it to edit the description so that the penguin is wearing a top hat. Finally, we'll generate the image one last time and we can see we get this dapper gentleman here. And that's everything you need to know to get started with AI hosted on your own local server with chatting on OpenWebUI and image generation with Stable Diffusion. 
we tried to make this process as easy as possible, but it is normal with this kind of thing to run into issues and have to do a bit of troubleshooting. We definitely ran into some issues while doing our setup, but we were able to find lots of help on the various communities around this platform like the Unraid forum itself or the Unraid subreddit on Reddit. If you do end up having any questions or just want to share your own experiences, definitely reach out to us down in the comments. We hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and have a great day.